again and welcome back to another video. Please excuse my background. I am in the middle of moving into an apartment and I don't quite have my space set up how I'd like it. There are some things coming in the mail, etc, etc. So hopefully it will be better soon. I'm only going to be here for this semester, my last semester of college ever. So we'll have my craft shelf back eventually. Today we're doing a project that I am super excited about and have been looking forward to, and that is a Samantha American Girl doll recreation. So Samantha Parkington was my favorite growing up. I was devastated when they retired her, even though I was past the point of being into the dolls. She wasn't actually my first doll. My first doll was her friend, companion, doll, Nellie. I thought I looked like her, which was not truly the case, but I like loved her and I love Samantha. I definitely want to do more of these, so if you would like to, please leave suggestions of dolls that you'd like to see down in the comments. Um, I prefer the more historical ones. Molly is a popular choice. I have, I've done many votes. I have a tally running on my computer but the more modern ones that are in the 20th century aren't really as appealing to me. Um, I really want to do Felicity, I really want to do Kirsten, whatever else, let me know. This was a little more challenging than I had initially thought because the clothes were designed for a doll, which is not the same as a human body. So you'll see. And I had to design my fabric myself. I made the file in Photoshop and got it printed through Spoonflower. Um, I will be showing you a clip of that right here. It's this red and gray gingham print, which you wouldn't think would be that difficult to find, but when you search red and gray or red and black, you get a lot of buffalo plaid, which is not at all this vibe. If you'd like me to put that design up publicly on Spoonflower, please let me know and I can just click a button and do that. I think it's currently private. I don't really know how spoon power works. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe. If you would like to see more of this series, I'm hoping it'll be a series. Again, vote down below with which dolls you'd like me to make a recreation of next. Pretty proud of how it turned out. So let's get started. Alrighty, since we're getting started on making the Samantha dress, I need to do a little research. So I'm looking at this outfit, which is the classic Samantha outfit, as opposed to this one, which is the reboot, I guess. So this is the Samantha doll I had. I'm gonna be making the bow, the dress, and the belt. But the other thing we need to look at is how long it is. So here's a full body picture. It looks like it ends right below her knees, maybe a little longer. So for my version, that's the length we're going with. And also, let's go back to the doll. I need to make sure I'm cutting my fabric in the right direction. Why is that picture blurry? Red and black stripes are going across her chest. So that is how I'm going to need to cut my fabric. All right, and for the pleat placement, this is a really good picture. It, it seems to end right at her neck, and then the second one about halfway, no, more than halfway to the shoulder, and then that, those are my two pleats. And it looks like those pleats are the same pleats that continue down the entire length of the dress. So I think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be constructing this historically, and instead I'm gonna be constructing it as if I were making a cosplay, which is kind of what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to pre-pleat the fabric. My first step was cutting my panels to the right length. Alrighty, so my fabric has been washed, it's slightly ironed, but it's gonna get ironed again once the pleats go in, so I wasn't too concerned about making it perfect. I also marked the center point of the fabric so I can work my pleats outwards and make sure it is perfectly symmetrical and I don't run out of fabric on either side. So with my handy dandy measuring tape, 
I measured how long I wanted the skirt to be and added a few extra inches to account for the print area. This is the, this side doesn't have it, but the other side has like about an inch of unprinted material. So I added a few inches so that should not be affecting my length and it can be hemmed or trimmed off later. So this panel, which you can only see part of, will be my front panel. And yeah, so with my measuring tape, I measured that length. And I also measured how wide I want my cleats to be. Okay, so here's my slightly nonsensical sketch. My center pleat is gonna be eight inches and then the parts that are tucked under. And then the next one starts three inches from that and the edges are left open. Um, I have to decide how far under I want the pleats to go. I think two inches maybe should be enough. I haven't decided, but since these squares, where's my measuring? Uh, since my gingham print is, there are one, two, three, four, five, six six little squares in an inch. So it should be fairly easy to just follow the print. Once I had those measurements figured out, I could start pleating. So basically what I did was I just measured where they needed to start and end at the top of the panels and then using the stripes on the gingham, followed that line all the way down and pinned it into place. Alrighty, so I just got to the end. All of my panels are pleated. I have, it's hard to fit it all into frame, but there's one here, one here, that's big, and this one. And as soon as I did that, I trimmed off the white bit where it was printed with the code, whatever. And I realized that I can't do anything with the pleats yet because I need to do the hem first. Because this is a historical garment, so I don't want the hem to have visible top stitching, so I'm gonna do it by hand. So I don't need to fit this under any sort of machine, which is good. For the hem, I ironed it up once, and then ironed it up again, completely concealing that raw edge, and then whip stitched it down. And then I gave it a good iron once that was finished. I then used some darker thread so that it would remain visible to tack all of my pleats down so that I could work with the panels without fear of them shifting too much. Alrighty, so this panel, this is the front panel, it is pleated, ironed both the front and back several times, and I have some stitches in just to make sure 
everything stays where it belongs while I cut out the neckline, which I'm not doing quite yet. And then here are my two back panels. The original dress for the doll, the back panel is completely flat, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna mirror this pleating, partially because the skirt is gonna need to be pleated or it will not have any room to be like a skirt because I am a human person and not a doll. So the skirt is gonna be pleated anyway, so I might as well just make it a similar type of design. Um, yeah, I think the back, the pleats are gonna be permanently stitched down so that it doesn't poof out and do weird things. But both of the hems for the two back pieces are ironed, so that's what I'm gonna do now. And then those same steps for the pleats were repeated for the back panel. Once both panels were done, I used a t-shirt to trace the shoulders, the neckline, and the arm skies so that it was shaped like a garment and not rectangles. and then I could cut that out. For the sleeves, I legitimately just eyeballed it. I was going to use a pattern, but I didn't have enough fabric left for said pattern, so what I did instead was make what I thought was the correct sleeve shape, and it worked, surprisingly. Okay, so in that last clip you probably saw me just, I made a sleeve shape. It's not that good, but since it's pretty big and it's going to be gathered down a little bit to fit into the armhole, I think it'll be fine. And the cuff is where the... I feel like the most important part of the gathering is anyway, and that is much bigger than my wrist. So that'll be nice and gathered, and we'll get the effect close enough. And then I cut out a collar. I just used my neck measurement, which I took from the pattern pieces, and created a rectangle that could be folded over to make a nice, simple collar. And then we could start stitching things together. I started with the shoulders, which were very difficult to sew through since all of that pleat fabric, it ended up being like, like six layers of fabric in some places, which was a little ridiculous. My machine was not too happy with me, but it all worked out in the end. The side seams, however, were a lot easier, and those were just also done with a simple straight stitch. Hello, please excuse the fact that we're in my bathroom. I don't have a full length mirror in my bedroom yet. So this is what we're doing. So here it is so far. It's really baggy and the back is not closed as you can see. 
So what we're doing now is I need to cut the neck a little looser because it's choking me a little bit. Um, but other than that, I think we're doing pretty well. I'm gonna add some pleats to the side so that it fits me a little better. And then I can pin on the ribbon. And then I made some coverable buttons. I, this kit, it didn't work. It was so difficult to get the buttons to snap into place. I don't know what kit I bought last time, but this one was a pain and made my hands hurt. And I had to take a really long break after doing that. And then I sewed up the sides of the sleeves. I left a little slit at the bottom of my sleeves, which I am now just finishing off by hand so that I could get in and out of the sleeves with the button closures. And then I somehow lost some of this footage but I gathered down the cuff of the sleeve, sewed it to the cuff piece, and now I'm just whip stitching that down so that it is nice and finished. and then that can get attached into the bodice. And then we could use the belt. I just pinned down some ribbon along where my waist will fall and I'm going to whip stitch it down. Now we can finish off the back edges. So I'm doing the same thing where I just whip stitch those raw edges under and they are nice and hidden. Once that's finished, we can start with the button placement.
And I used my buttonhole foot to make all of my buttonholes so that I didn't want to do them by hand because it turned out to be a lot of buttons. This machine luckily had a buttonhole setting so I was able to save a little time there. And then finally, for my last step, I just made a simple bow so I can pin that into my hair. All right, so overall, I am very happy with this look. There are a few things that I'd like to change, but I think it's really fun. And I think once cons come back in the far off future, it will be a very good outfit for conventions. Um, my wig doesn't have bangs. because This is the only brown wig I owned and I wasn't about to buy another one for a Samantha American Girl costume, but I think it still looks cute. So I'm especially proud of the sleeves, especially since um, I just kind of did them. Like, I just drew a shape and it worked and looks how I wanted it to look. And that's incredible. I didn't think I was capable of just drafting without any reference. So I'm very proud of myself for that. I'm also proud of the pleats. I hate pleats. They're difficult and they take forever. I much prefer gathers. But I think these look nice, despite the quantity of them. The buttonholes. Buttonholes did not turn out great. I made them too small, so I had to cut them open, so now I'm gonna have to redo them in the future. But besides that, overall, I'm super happy with this costume. I'm super happy with how it fits. Child me's heart is so overjoyed. And just, it's a great time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what other American Girl dolls you'd like to see me recreate. I want this to be a series on my channel. Please vote for your favorite American Girl doll. So please let me know which other American Girls you would like to see. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye. I wish I had a hat. I can't do the pose without a hat.